Hello and welcome to the second video in this series looking at NVD3 charting. So at the end of the last video we had a chart a bit like the one just with more data in that we've got in the window here and it was a little bit taller um, with our tooltips uh, has been deprecated warning on the right hand side and I said in the end of the last video that in this video we'd look at customizing the colors on the bars. I went back and rewatched the last video because I wasn't very comfortable at the end because it was cut quite short because I wanted to keep the video short and it took longer to do the introduction than I thought, but I didn't really explain at all what we'd done. So uh, even in a sort of a superficial basic way, I should really explain to you actually what went on with the code rather than just pasting it in um, and producing a graph and saying, aren't we great? Um, I'm starting from almost exactly the same code that we finished the last video. The only thing is, is inside draw chart and tool tips, I can't remember whether we had true or false. So I've got false at the moment. I'm going to change that back to true and then we'll have a look at what that is. And inside data.js, I've taken out I've only left three objects, which are our label uh, with, with our label and value inside the values list so that we can play around with things a little bit easier in this video. So what I'd like to do in this video then, I'll try and keep it short. I just want to explain what's going on here in this code here, make a couple of changes to the chart to give you an idea, and then we can move on to, to, to the following videos. So the first thing is, um, I'm going to be very, very superficial, as I said, with the explanation here, because it's intended for beginners, people who just want to get started. If you want to go into detail, go to nvd3.org, go to the blog. It's not maintained, but there are two posts here, Architecture and Lifecycle, which explain very well what's going on. And then further interest, go to d3js.org. Uh, uh, there's documentation there, and there's a really good, there's some really good tutorials. I was having a look, and let's make a bar chart, parts one, two, and three, really is kind of good background for what we're doing here to give you an idea of what um, NVD3 is actually wrapping around. And there's also somewhere D3 for mere mortals, which is actually also quite a nice tutorial as well, explaining all things about D3. But D3 is very, very powerful, but extremely complicated. Therefore, uh, NVD3 was made to wrap it and make it reusable in a, a much easier way. So to go into to look at what we've got, when we come to drawing a chart, we called on the button press our draw chart function and our chart is drawn. And there are two key sections to the chart being drawn. One is our NVD3 object. Uh, we add a, a graph, uh, call the add graph function, sorry. And inside there, we execute a load of code. Inside there, what we do is we create our chart from uh, creating a discrete bar chart. And we'll have a look in later videos at what this is in detail. We say we want a discrete bar chart. Um, we have to define what, e what each X and Y are. And each of those has a function inside. And essentially what they're doing is for each of the items in our data list, in our values list here, we're returning the label or the value. This is the key here like so. So d.label for the x and d.value for the y. We'll come back to that in a minute. Then we've got an option here whether we want to stagger the labels or not. At the moment that option is set to true. So you can see that the b is lower than the a and the c. Um, Tooltips is set to true, but you'll notice that um, we've got the warning here. We have to fix that because that's deprecated. And show values is set to true is the values that sit on top of the bars. So just to play around a little bit, first of all, I'm going to delete the tool trip, tool tips, tool trips, sorry, tool tips, uh, set the stagger labels to false and set the show values to false and just go back to our chart and have a quick look at what's changed to make sure that I'm not going crazy and things are going to work correctly. So indeed, we don't have any values. The labels are no longer staggered. We still do have tool tips because by default, they're set to true, but we, have, we don't have our warning anymore. We have to do things a tiny bit differently. Uh, we actually have to say chart uh, dot tooltip uh, dot enabled and uh, false in this case. I think it's tooltip and not tooltips. We're about to find out. And this should then, uh, okay, we didn't get a warning, but I set it to false so we won't have them. So I'll set it to true. Go back to the chart, refresh. And now we've got our tooltips coming in this way and we're conforming with the latest version of the library. The other thing I'm going to do very quickly in data.js is just go to B and set the value to five. So at least we can actually see something inside our chart there or a bar representing. I need to refresh and empty the cache to do that. 
Okay, so we've got five for B. Very good. So we can already see that we can already do some stuff with our chart just from seeing basically what we've got here. The next thing that's done is D3 is used to select our SVG inside uh, the element that has the ID chart, which is this div here inside our index.html. Very important then is this line. And this is a line where we submit our data to draw our chart. And the important thing is, as I said in the last video, is the format of the data is exactly as required to draw the chart that you've declared, in this case, our discrete bar chart. Then the calls are made to draw the chart, and the chart is, is returned. A couple more things for finishing this video that's probably interesting. So it's actually already possible to do quite a bit of customization. And the first thing you should do out of interest, have a look at this function here. Each function here will be called for each object inside our data list. So if I just go to console.log um, and then D, and I'll just uh, have our D object. So if I just log what D is to the console here and just refresh, here we can see that we've got our Ds being printed out and as I move the mouse around more and more of them. I move it over here and I get the C object appearing down. Um, I'm just going to clear the console. So I'm bouncing over the C and I get the C, I bounce over the B and I get the B, I bounce over the A and I get the A. Um, and here we can see that what we get inside our object is the label, the ser a series number and the value. And the series will come to in a minute. Series not zero, i.e. the first series. We only have one series on our discrete bar chart. What this allows us to do here is already quite a bit of customization. I'm just going to take that off. I could, for example, put cat underscore plus my label if I wanted to customize my label a little bit. And obviously I could customize the formatting or something like that inside there. And now you'll notice that when I load the chart, I've got cat A, cat B, and cat C, for example. Very nice instead. I could also do something similar um, on the Y one. I could return Y multiplied by 500, for example. I want to do that, but just for demonstration purposes. I load the chart, and now the Y values have all become multiplied by 500. So then you can use these functions inside here to do all sorts of customization that you might want to do for the actual label and value being returned when drawing the chart. The last thing I want to look at before closing this video is I showed earlier when we uh, printed out the D to the console and I'm just going to do Control and Z and get that back. If I just rerun the chart, we had a series number for our data label. So I'll just let our chart be drawn. And now if I look in the label A here, we've got its series zero. So what does that mean? Well, when we talked in the last video about data JS, and I said we have to be very, very careful of the, the chart data because we've actually got a list with one object inside. Well, we can actually have more than one object inside this list, and each of these will defined, be defined as its own series. I'll make that key unique there. I'll just change these labels to uh, X, Y, and Z. And now I've actually got two series. So if I go back and refresh and redraw my chart, now you see that I've got the same thing repeated twice. And then if I take, for example, the object with an X in, you can see that's now series one and the Y is series one and the Z is series one. And because it's a discrete bar chart, it's giving me each one series after another. It's not a group bar chart where it'll cluster them together. So although the format of the data originally looked strange, it was because we only had one object in, therefore giving us just one single series, but we can actually have a list of as many series as we want. So hopefully that's gone some way to explaining a little bit about how uh, we did what we did in during, drawing the chart. In the next video, we're going to have a little bit of a dig into the options available and see if we can find out where this discrete bar chart function is coming from. Uh, any questions, any issues, then please let me know. Pop a comment in the comment section. Otherwise, thanks very much for watching and see you in the next one.